Um, so, well, welcome. Thanks for coming on Second Opinion. Um, yeah. Would you like to introduce, your, you know, your your case and um, then we'll yeah. crack on for 20 minutes or so and um, see what we can come up with to help? Yeah, all right. Um, oh, I don't really know where to start. I've got some stomach things um and um the main problem is palpitations that have been oh. 10 years um there's other sort of yeah I mean, different things if you want people to, if you want to invite people to question you you can do that yeah you know. okay that's probably a good idea yeah so in floor is open Deborah. <laughs> Hi Carol. Hi. I'm Emma. I'm the um, one of the counselors at um Anahata. Hi. Hello. Um you you suffer with anxiety? Yeah. Yes. And and that's been for a, a while, a long time. Um all my life really. Has it? And and yeah. have you had any counseling at all before? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and and how's that been? Has that been helpful? Has that been useful? Sometimes it's not usually enough. It's not usually usually enough. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm I'm autistic and I have ADHD and I think that plays a big part in the whole um overthinking anxiety thing and how that relates to my. Yeah, I've got this and I think that it all sort of ties in together. Yes. Okay. I feel like the palpitations are to do with my digestion. But I don't feel like I've really been supported by the GP. Um, I'm on medication. I take medication for, it's a proton pump inhibitor. Can you tell us a little bit more about what, what's wrong with you, Ivan? What's wrong with my what, sorry? Digestion. Oh, okay, yeah. So in 2007, I was getting really bad pains and um, it, it, was like, it was like the top of my stomach and it sort of moved from one side to the other. Um, and it was worse when I bent forward. Um, I had like, um, you know, when they put a camera down, whatever they're called, some sort of Oscar P thing. Um, yeah. yeah, um, but they didn't find anything then. And then the doctor said, oh, it might be hiatus hernia. But they didn't really seem to diagnose me with that. And then I've been taking those tablets ever since. We love to not take them but I think I'm scared of what was happening was I was getting the pains and then it's like my esophagus would stop it just sort of went into a spasm and then I'd get shooting pains down my left arm and you know I ended up going to A&E a couple of times because of that and I, that that was way before I had palpitations um that sounds yeah. Like, sorry. Yeah, it was horrible. So, yeah. you know, the, the, what do you call it? The, um, the tablets did help with that. Uh, but, you know, I've heard that they're not brilliant, really, because they're just stopping the stomach acid and it's actually, you know, that, um, those symptoms that I was talking about, they can be a sign of low stomach acid. So it might actually, not be a good thing to keep taking them well, and it's I a mean, really long time you know since 2007 mm. to be on that it's a long time that is a long time I mean um from my perspective I would be wanting to assess what your breathing mechanics are like because your diaphragm sits right above your stomach and that actually helps the, the sphincter at the top of the stomach close it helps keep acid in and it's you know if they talk 
that hiatus sounds like it could be sort of rising up through the cap a little bit. It sounds like everything mm. might be held quite high and maybe your lower ribs aren't moving well. And it and in the same in the same sort of vein, the um the diaphragm coming up and descending every time you breathe sort of massages your abdominal organs and it helps keep lymphatic drainage going. So mm. it does sound like these things could tie together with a bit with a bit of um a look at your breathing mechanics mm. is is sleep an issue as well it sounds like you're in a sort of a heightened sort of um, yeah state quite hard to switch off it is uh, yeah I don't really relax I found it really difficult to relax oh. um yeah I I sleep is well it's mostly been okay which is such a blessing but um oh. Let me think. Sleep. Um, yeah. I can get sleep, but I sort of have to go to bed quite late. Okay. Um, in order to be able to stay asleep all night. Mm, okay. Um, and I don't know if that's, you know, my sort of brain being too busy. Um, yeah. yeah, so recently, yeah, so the palpitations thing, that started happening around the same time as menopause, which was about 20 that 10 years um and then a year later i started taking beta blockers because um just, just kept happening a lot and they were happening in the middle of the night and you know it was just really do i couldn't really sort of get on with things and uh you know i had two teenagers then um mm. Yes, yeah, so that's another thing I don't really want to be on. Almost 10 years I've been on them. Yeah. And now I'm taking HRT as well, mm. <laughs> which I didn't really, you know, I just feel like I sort of take all these things that I don't really want to be on, but there wasn't really anything else on offer. I think that's really common, but I always think it's, there's no there's no too late about any situation and you can always help you better help it better support it better and um you know that can be through all kinds of different modalities the acupuncture and all sorts of um yeah different therapies mm. and certain work, worry workshops and things you know with strategies for anxiety or with practical tips that are mm. run by charities like Mind, things like that. So um, yeah, I have done. I've done an anxiety. I did help. Yeah. I've done everything. I've done things mm. for PTSD. Yeah, I mean, I've just done loads. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, you're you're a brave person. You've you've ventured out onto second opinion. So this is a new yeah. one. It's a bit daunting when you yeah. don't know. It's gonna be we I've just I realized that I maybe should have introduced everyone because we all introduced ourselves to the ether because before you arrived so um right okay that, that there you've just been speaking to talking about your breathing that's um Phoenicia she's an osteopath okay so oh, okay. Um, and I think yeah. that's quite I don't know just I am I'm like I'm I'm not a therapist so I don't listen to me about anything if I say anything like I think this but I do think that that's interesting about the mechanics of breathing. I've never heard that before. Yeah. And uh, sounds oh. like a really, because it is, our breathing is so, you know, when you do the meditation, it's all about your breathing, isn't it? So, yeah. and calm breathing and, you know, mm. go with your breath. So that sounds quite interesting. I mean, but um, <clears throat> Carol also said that, that uh, the whole palpitation thing started when she became menopausal. So that would tend to be much more of a, <clears throat> some other kind of issue that perhaps is not doesn't need um osteopathy there although i totally agree that you know sort of making the diaphragm work would be a great idea mm. but maybe we should ask fee if she's got any suggestions yes. she's a hormonal mm. queen by the sounds of it <laughs> yes hey carol um, yeah, i'm the i'm a herbalist anna hatter um so i had a look through your notes um and really what stood out to me was the the need for some um, support around your nervous system. And um, I feel like a lot of the, a lot of the issues 
just come from that um, state of hypo or hyper arousal and mm. like increasing your resilience and your resistance to environmental stress or health stress or whatever stress is going mm. on for you with that window of tolerance for you. Mm. Um, you spend okay. more time in that rest and digest state yeah. Yeah. and less time in that fight or flight because actually a lot of like I was looking at a lot of your symptoms and thinking actually some of these could be a sign of um like iron magnesium b12 deficiency I don't know if you've had any mm -hmm. of that tested but also a lot of them are a sign of high levels of adrenaline yeah um, which comes which comes from trauma and comes from mm -hmm. PTSD. um yeah and so the muscle pains the palpitations um even the cold hands and feet that mm. can be a sign of just your nervous system really needing that support um yeah so herbally obviously we'd need to talk a lot more because there's a lot of mm. history to go through to figure out the best way to approach it but um yeah. Yeah, herbally, um, we have a lot of categories of her herbs that I think would be useful for you alongside like um, heart support and hormonal support. There's a lovely herb called motherwort, um, Leonor, mm. which is often given post-menopause um, or pre-menopause, especially when there's heart palpitations. Um, mm. But we also have, we have herbs like adaptogens, which help the body respond um mm. nervine um tonics that help the nervous system and help tone the nervous system and also encourage relaxation and some of these are also um specific for anxiety or digestion um so that could be a really helpful helpful thing for you um one herb that keeps coming out is coming up for me for you is hawthorn because that's mm. an adaptogenic herb it's also a cardiac tonic. Um, it's a nerve vine. It helps cover a lot of the a lot of the issues that you're struggling with. Um yeah. yeah. So that's how that's how I'd approach it from herbs, obviously getting a bit deeper with you and figuring out mm. exactly what's going on and a bigger picture. But I think that herbs could be really helpful in terms of like increasing that resistance and resilience and window of tolerance for you so that you yeah. have less time in the fight or flight states either side yeah I feel like you're on the right track there <laughs> it just <laughs> sounds right <laughs> yeah yeah because I just feel like you know um I'm tense a lot of the time like when I wake up and the dentist said that I grind my teeth and when I wake, I'm still clenched or and I have to consciously sort of stop myself. So I must have been doing it when I was asleep, I think. Mm. And you know, the tension stays in my body. I don't seem to be able to release it. I find foot baths re remarkably um, relaxing, actually. <laughs> it's a really good way to be sort of super grounded and be relaxed at the same time. <clears throat> yeah. Yo what about um, yoga nidra? Have you tried that at all, Carol? Um, yoga doesn't... Yeah, yoga's difficult for me because I've got um, these this back thing. Oh, this is um, yoga nidra. It, it's not. Um, it's not sort of stretches and and poses and lying flat on the floor. Isn't yeah, it? that's it. So it's it's more yeah, that hurts my back. Relaxation. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, you could yeah. always do it in a chair. Hmm. Yeah. It's not. It's not to do with poses or postures. It's a. No. It's a, it's a sort of like a guided relaxation. I just find it really, really difficult to motivate myself to do stuff on my own. That, that you know, sounds lovely, but I don't know if I'd actually do it, to be honest. Mm. I just know what I'm like. I want to do something and then I just can't do it without somebody kind of um, prompting me. Mm. It's uh, something that you that you find you like to do for relaxation. 
Um, being in nature is about it, really. That's lovely. Um, green space is great, and also blue space. Blue space is brilliant as well. Yeah. See, it's white, yeah. Mm. Blue yeah. space. Oh, it's blue though, is it? <laughs> no, it's quite often grey. What's blue space? It's similar to green space, but blue. So sea, sky, lakes, ponds. Mm. Yeah has a similar impact on us yeah yeah we've got to see haven't we we can definitely yeah. <laughs> well uh yes i'm pioneering beach karaoke i'll just put another message out for that so if you want to come on a beach karaoke uh experience do do you do do you sing at all no Carol? no <laughs> does it fill you with fear to sing no but i don't like being around loads of people Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, one thing I was thinking is maybe it's, I don't know how you say this, Sibo? Sibo? Does anybody know about that? I think you're talking about Sibo, aren't you? Yeah. S-S-I-B-O. Yeah. And um, I think that's um, small intestine bacterial overgrowth. Yeah. So um, she's not here, but uh, I think Rachel knows quite a lot about that. <clears throat> Maybe yeah. Fee does as well. Not as much as Rachel. Because <laughs> Rachel, she, she's got a whole thing about gut health. And I think SIBO is one of those things that is, um, you know, that people have problems with, isn't it? And I think she's she's spent quite a lot of time sort of working yeah. out what to do with that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just... is she um nutritionist? Yeah, she is. That's yeah. right. Because IBS is a is a is a is a syndrome. It's a cause. Its cause can be lots of different things, and SIBO can be one of the causes of IBS. Um, okay. Possible that there could be other causes as well. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah, to, say... I mean, to me, it feels <laughs> like it could be it could be that and what um. B was saying about like the nervous system thing yeah I mean I, 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 I I've got to put my little oar in here I um I totally agree IBS is a syndrome and so it, it gets used to describe all sorts of different but honestly from what Carol said it doesn't sound like she's talking about the lower part of her abdomen it sounds like she's talking about the upper part of her abdomen you know which is mm -hmm. more kind of the stomach diaphragm and then potentially going up into the into the sort of heart area isn't it you know and all that kind of stuff so I would suspect that it probably isn't SIBO but I'm not I'm not a trained nutritionist so I'm just taking a big guess here um I what I would say is that it does sound like you know from what you said is that there's a lot of tension and so you know is there any point deciding on giving it a name, SIBO, IBS, whatever the hell you want? You know, really what we want to do is try and find ways that can sort of relax your muscles because it sounds like everything is really, you know, uh, you can call it um, adrenalized or you can call it, yeah. you know, whatever you like, but everything's like mega tight, basically. That's yeah. what it sounds like to me. Yeah. It's a roundabout way of putting it. <laughs> Sorry about mm. that. <laughs> So, you know, exploring things that you can do to relax, I think, is a really, really good idea. Mm -hmm. And it could be, I don't know, um, Reiki. It could be math. It could be for a walk or not going for a walk. It could be being in nature. It could be, I have no idea, putting your feet in a hot bath. You know, that's why I was suggesting that. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I don't know what those things are. But I'm also interested in the fact that you've talked about, talked about back pain. Is that upper back pain is it lower back pain um it's where i injured my coccyx so that um oh, flat yeah. or, if I, or if i sit right on it like that's what yoga usually is isn't it those two things so i did try yoga because i really oh. wanted it to work and it just made my back loads worse no, and, and, and coccyx is a weird things, aren't they? And yeah. something happens and it takes ages for them to get better. Isn't that yeah. right? I think Venetia knows quite a lot about this. I yes. can see yeah. her. So that oh, was something else that was going on around that time. Mm. 
and you know I've got um it's there in the notes about me being in an abusive relationship so that was all that was the stress that was going on mm. so you know PTSD and all that it's about um yeah what else was Oh, yeah, the other thing that I've sort of learned a little bit about, but not completely, is about the vagus nerve. And I think that's, you know, I just feel like it's sort of twanging away, like, you know, it's activated. And, uh, yeah, I don't really know what to do about that, how to help my vagus nerve. Well, I, so, I was gonna, uh, sorry, I was just going to put pitch for on behalf of Rachel for colonic irrigation which is something she started doing in addition to um the um nutrition so you so she's doing packages where you get a sort of nutritional help and the idea is to sort of kick re kick start your gut flora and mm -hmm. I know I can't remember exactly how the vagus nerve comes into this but I know it does and um, mm. I do think going, you know, at least talking to her might might be a useful thing to do. Sorry, she's not here. Sorry, carry yeah. on proper proper therapists. I think I, the vagus nerve has got a lot to do with his stomach, hasn't it? It it does, yes. And it's one of the um, it's one of the nerves that exits at your the base of your cranium. So cranial therapy can be really helpful, Ooh. which is another thing that I do. Or there's craniosacral therapy as well. And as I say, because it involves the sacrum and the cranium, the sacrum, you know, the coccyx is just a little sort of a little tailbone on the end of the sacrum. So if your coccyx is distorted or deviated off in one direction or being held awkwardly, it does mean that your sacrum can't sort of sit comfortably mm. um, in the pelvis. And it does have a lot of knock on effects and it just right. things from moving well, functioning well. And there's so many nerves passing through that area. Um, mm. that it's something that can be quite powerful to get moving properly. So yeah. uh, I think that's another really useful avenue to have a look cranially at you, um, mm. which is yeah, really gentle. And again, it, it really cranks your nervous system down um, into that rest and digest state. I mean, I have a lot of people apologising for their very gurgly tummies while they're on my couch. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, no, this is so welcome. It's, oh, well, sorry, it's so good. And um, uh it is something I find can can be really helpful in breaking a cycle. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of what Fee said I thought sounded amazing, and I I'm going to have to have a chat with Fee about um, <laughs> about uh, her take on the nervous system too, because I think that I think is something that's becoming increasingly common, and I think that more and more people are struggling with, and I'd love to uh, find out more perspectives on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and even on a basic level, just the connection between the base of your spine and the top of your spine where your head is has got to be sort of quite a good thing to try and align it. If it's especially if it's been off for a long time, you know, that's going to make the whole system. You're like a tree. The whole system's mm -hmm. going to go a bit jangly, nasty, I would have thought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I do. I've noticed that my balance is I mean, I'm quite uncoordinated anyway. But my balance has been really quite bad for a, a while, a year or two. I think, again, you've mentioned jaw tightness or grinding your teeth. And all of that just creates such... I think when you're in a tense state, it's hard to have a proper um, sort of perception of where your body's at and... and um where it is in space and um, it's called proprioception and, yeah, and how to balance... Yeah, with and that anyway, because of the... Mm. autism and that mm. and i've just got to say that the stomach channel is all around the back of the jaw here so all that grinding business is just right. setting the stomach off even worse yeah yeah it's really hard when like you're asleep how do you stop doing it <laughs> i mean i i do have quite a lot of uh people that i see that have uh that grind their teeth and um we can it, it can be a little sore but we do some really lovely releases right around the the jawbone here and mm. um you know i see people after they've had dental work done and things like that it can be really relieving and i think we just need to catalyze some change um yeah. and actually when your body feels a change that 
that it needs very often it sort of just takes it on board and rolls with it um mm. so I think releasing some of that tension and tightness and getting you feeling more even more relaxed um it might catalyze you feeling better about some yoga nidra or more nature walks or whatever it is you fancy doing and um it just sounds like you're quite stuck where you're where you're at actually yeah um yeah. And you've tried I, I, do, I do think that and I don't really understand why it's I feel like you know there's no like crisis going on now things are okay so why do I you know why am I like this stuck in the fight or flight yeah it's like things are okay mm -hmm. now but my body's not, you know, my mind is not sort of catching up with that reality. I think also sometimes it takes it takes some time, like after things being okay, um, for you to feel safe to move out of that space, um, mm -hmm. but also for you to recover from burnout yeah. and managing managing yeah. being in that space. Um, I think it can it can sometimes take take some time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And the other thing is that comes to mind because I see lots of people who are on a lot of medication and they I don't think that the doctor ever does a review. You know, because yeah, they um, do sometimes one with me recently. different, you know, medications they don't go very well together and maybe you've been on one thing but the doctor hasn't noticed that you've been on that one and something else. Do you know what I mean? That yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, they did actually do a review. Oh, good. And, you know, I say that I want to come off it, but they're just like, oh, well, yeah, you could do. And I don't know. I just feel like I haven't got a sort of safe. It's like a safety net, you know. I mean, that's that's like a program that, that quite often people come and they say, I want to come off this medication. And I say, well, you've got to tell your doctor. And then we sort of talk about it. And then we agree that, you know, you're going to say to the doctor, OK, I'm going to lower this dose, you know, and then I'm going to see what happens. And I've got somebody that I'm talking to as well. Do you see what I mean? So that you can, it's like yeah. a, you can start the process and be very gentle and slow about it. So it's not something horrendous. You know, it, no. I mean, I have met some people who've just come straight off. But generally, if you've got like a whole load of different ones and you've been on them for a long time, you know, it's much you can you can kind of mellow the process. Do you know what I mean? It's I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, feel I'm, like I need someone to sort of hold my hand. Hold it just your hand. Sort of exactly. terrifying. That's part of it is holding your hand and saying it's OK. You know, we've got a safety net. You don't have to, you know, freak out. You can stop for a bit. You can lower the dose slowly. And we're supporting you so that you don't have to sort of, you know, feel like you're jumping off the edge of a cliff. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, are, are we are we coming to the, uh, uh, you know, anybody has got the last things to say that or, or any, any Maybe questions? Maybe Daniel needs to say something. Oh, uh, there is he gone. There he is. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can just say that uh, I think what's, you know, what's been said is is really good, basically. I just back up what's been said so far. And that it does sound like a, a prong, a look, a multi pronged approach with some physical work to help the back, help the jaw, help the lower back, and some internal herbs uh, that's, you know, that can kind of, you know, herbs can. If you've been taking medication for a long time, you know, your body's used to taking stuff, but you can kind of slide in maybe to taking herbs that sort of replace that medication, even though it's a, be a tricky thing to say. But, um, but yeah, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. And I think Anna Hatt is a great place to see multiple people and to kind of, uh, you know, create a holistic program of, of healing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. You know, there are a few sayings in Chinese medicine that, that come out in my head. Like one of them is you know, when the heart suffers palpitation, you look to the noisy neighbor, which is often the stomach, right? Mm -hmm. So the stomach is like too loud and the heart is like, hey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I did. I went to see someone at Anhata, um, Sabine, a kinesiologist. Mm. And that was really helpful because she said um, I had too much potassium 
and to eat less potatoes and that has actually helped and then the doctor didn't tell me that no that's really cool because also sabine can tell you if you've got any major allergies or intolerances and things like that so that's actually very very helpful yeah yeah it has helped starting point i would say that's a really useful place to start yeah i was just and, one um, book hang on and what daniel was saying about you know using the herbs instead of the medication or whatever and kind of like gradually doing that i think that's great because also you know i think it's easier to come off herbs than it is to come off medication to be honest mm. i was just going to say that you know if uh, you take some of this advice and probably come and see some of these people here um would you be willing to come back and do a follow-up second opinion yeah okay yeah that'd be great yeah Thank you. Yeah. And yeah. Two, I've got, okay. I have two, one, two other little things that I could say, just as, um, you know, giving advice and things that you can do at the moment, right? So I was thinking one, the uh, vagus nerve has a, has a connection to the ear. And so all around the back of the ear, doing like gentle massage, um, all it's around the back of the tip. ear. And then, this is a health tip. This is, this is a health tip. <laughs> Today, yeah. So Vegas has no connection to the back of the ear. All around there, massaging. Even uh, one of my friends does a uh, um, sort of uh, Star Trek thing and massage the front <laughs> and the back mm. at the same time. Mm. Oh, nice. And Mr. Spock, yeah. Mm -hmm. and you get both the front and the back. Mm, okay. um, another thing, like I was thinking about the herbs, and you was... Um, B was saying hawthorn is a great herb for the heart and it's interesting because hawthorn is a red a red berry right mm -hmm. and in chinese medicine we kind of think of anything that's kind of red and a little bit sweet being nice for the heart mm -hmm. hawthorn is like a little bit sweet a little bit bitter but so you can think about goji berries cherries um beetroots all these things that are red have a little magical connection with the heart and so those can be a little bit soothing for the for the heart so there you go that's those my two little tips mm, health tip health tip you just actually just reminded me of something down something that you might have i know i think you said about breathing exercises um carol that you've that you have tried did you you said about breathing exercises or you haven't got on with them very well yeah yeah, I find this about that really hard. You I find just it don't hard seem to do it right. Oh, was well, something really s simple that um it can be really helpful to calm your whole nervous system down is just to breathe in and um on the count of seven, just fill your body with air on the count of seven, and then exhale on the count of eleven. So the exhale is much longer than the inhale, and um. If you do a few of those, that can be really, really calming. Um, if you're feeling anxious or you're getting your those palpitations, it might be a really good exercise just to do that that sort of simple exercise. Yeah, thanks. Brilliant. Second health tip. <laughs> I'll mark them on the on the video. So, do we have any final thoughts, or do you have any final questions, Carol? Before we say cheerio um oh i don't think so well, yeah so if, if i want to you know book a thing with anyone then i just go on the website and do it that way do you know all the names do you, do you, do you yeah need to remind no, I've, you? Got, I've written down who's who and what you do great i, I won't try and sum up what they all said because um but they did yeah, say no, some I've good things it, I think. i've got it down here it's good well organized for well done. Just a little, a little disclaimer quickly as well, just to check with a herbalist or someone before taking any of the herbs that I've mentioned, just to make sure they're okay with medication. Yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we'll look forward to seeing you after you feel loads better. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be that'd great. Be nice. <laughs> yeah, thank, that would be nice. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks everyone. That was great. Thank you. Thank you for no, coming. Sorry.